I do, before we finish kind of with some of the projected record stuff, this was another uh, graph that you sent, and this was just next year's games projected at, on a game-by-game -game status. So, mm -hmm. um, and Dave, our Dave, <laughs> Redcast Dave, we've talked about this, like how important that is to get off to an early start. And, you know, this would have us at 5-1, and one, losing to Purdue, so now you're 5-2, and two, you win the the next two, and you're 7-2. and two but then we'd lose the last three so seven and five and and as you said adam that's the the highest uh projected probability at 17.81 percent just i mean 0 0.06 percent edging out eight and four so i mean really this you have us by the numbers i mean we're seven and five or eight and four according to to your wait, what you wait guys have. more importantly i saw a 3.19 percent chance that they go 12 and 0 <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just want to be clear there that there is a chance they're saying there's a chance. Yeah, it's, okay. It's okay. a better chance than going to 12, I guess. So <laughs> oh dude, so, 0 12 is epic. Yeah. Everybody it, loses oversight of the the 0 12 is glorious. 12 and 0 is much easier than 0 12. You you take you have a special level of crappy coaching to get to 0 12. Watch that <laughs> that that is oh yeah, right up right up the road. Right up the road. No, I got no. I got no problem yeah. Yeah. talking talking trash to Washington about that. Um, but you look at you look at Adam's numbers on the projections. Look, Vegas has them at seven and a half. I mean, that's right in the middle of what he's talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. right? And and there's there there's a handful of games that you know if, if you wanted to break it down real quick, even without power rankings, right? Just look at coaching and home field and talent. Okay, your your first game. Nebraska at Northwestern. That's got to be a W. You got more talent. You got better coaching. You know, and, and Northwestern really hit the skids after they lost their defensive coordinator. That's 1-0, and o, right? You got to win the FCS game. We're, we're not even going to argue about that. If that goes the other way, then you already know my feelings on losing the FCS teams, right? Mm -hmm. Georgia Southern. But you got the better staff. You got better talent. You're at home. That's a W. Okay, Oklahoma, you should lose that football game. But isn't it cool – to have Oklahoma at home with a head coach in his fourth week and an offensive coordinator that's in his fourth week and Ted Roof defense. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool, right? The, I mean, what, the leaky roof defense. The leaky roof defense. <laughs> right? so, so, you know, from, you know, you look at those first four, and I'm not calling Oklahoma a coin flip, but getting that early in the season is much better than getting it later. Yeah, so, I, think you, I think you got better odds there. Do you think that um, Nebraska's defense is better than uh, Texas's defense last year? Like, do you think next? <laughs> because I'm asking that because Casey Thompson threw six touchdowns against against Oklahoma last year, right? But Oklahoma when scored more points, so they won, obviously. But I mean, so I mean, when I look at that sort of thing, like I wonder because you know you've got a quarterback who understands. I know Oklahoma has a new coach and everything, but you know he also hates that school. So there's there is the hate factor that goes into it, which I'm sure aren't in your analytics. <laughs> oh, you know, there's there's there, there's a hate coefficient there, but we ignore we ignore it. We yeah. ignore it. Yeah, um, I, I feel like you should add that into your analytics. The hate factor. The hate all right. Factor. No, but, but you, you look at now last year. Um, actually, Nebraska's defense, and Adam can back this up 100%, highly underappreciated, top 25 in scoring efficiency mm -hmm. last year. It was really good. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, even even offensively, I think offensive scoring efficiency was 63rd. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was it was half point. It was midway point. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it wasn't dumpster fire. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't setting any records, but it, it, it was it just the, uh, the special teams. Dude, come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were so bad. Redcast, Dave, do you do you know happen to know what like our our yards per point were last year? Or that's because I know that's a stat. That's a key stat that you like to focus on showing efficiency. And yeah, you know. it's a Phil Still number. I I don't actually know. I haven't. I've okay. I've not yeah, gotten the Phil Still magazine but, but yet. Overall, but it might be out there. Yeah, but but overall, Nebraska's defense was very good last year. Texas was probably Adam would also back this up. We <laughs> thought that defense was going to be a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. That defense was 104th in scoring efficiency last year. You know, the yeah. offense was 15th. Now, Steve Sarkeesian still can't coach worth a damn, yeah. but we expected that Texas defense to be a lot better. I think it will be this year as well, but mm -hmm. you're not playing them, so who cares, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as they got Sark there, they they should they should be 
underperform in the talent like he has everywhere he's been. Well, the only um, reason I asked that is because I was saying, you know, Nebraska's defense has to be better than Texas's defense was last year, meaning that if Casey Thompson can Thompson. perform the way that he did against <laughs> against Texas last year or against, against Oklahoma, Oklahoma last year, I'm sorry, um, uh, playing for Texas, you know, that there's a good chance that we could beat them as well because our defense would be better. Now you're that was, using that's my logic. That's Rob logic, by the way. <laughs> Hi, I'm right best Rob yeah. we're, we're, we're using Husker Rob transitive Linear. college football math logic, right? <laughs> Rob's trying to get us to Actually, those... I've got a board right here. I could draw it out for you and show you. Is this one of those teams where Alcorn State's the national champion by some random I, I would, I would never, math. but I do have Nebraska going at least 15-0. <laughs> yeah, Rob, Rob has his 15-0, and, and he just needs to find a way to get us there. So you got to beat Oklahoma. Right. That's, that's one just way to get your own there. power rankings, Rob. Just put them a one. It's easy. <laughs> right, but you, get, you, you know, and you got Indiana at home. Right, you got better talent. You got better coaching. Indiana has the worst offensive coordinator in the Big Ten by a country mile. Mm -hmm. um, so you score 17 points, win the football game. Uh, mm -hmm. Rutgers, uh, Shiano, you know it's it's up and down. That that's a that's a tough one, but you still have a better, more talent. You got a better coaching staff, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're at five and one. Purdue, there's your coin flip game, right? That's if you're betting over, yep. yeah. If you're betting over. You you need that game. Right? Look at That's the percent. Look at the percentage chance of win here. Forty nine point nine two percent. If there's ever a toss up, because you have toss up games listed for six of these, but that one game in particular, that is almost as 50 50 as you can get, right, Adam? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that that one is. I think, um, and I I didn't I didn't include that on this graphic because I, I I'm not going to do that until before the you know just before the season. But I think the actual point spread projection on that game was like 0. .03 points. Mm -hmm. to Purdue wow. so it's 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 a little <clears throat> the, the game should go to overtime so it's what it's saying yeah. So, you know. so, yeah so now now we're at what five and a half wins right we're and, gonna go yeah. coin flip there Illinois that's better than a coin flip you got to avenge last year's look I know Bielema is solid uh the coaching staff's good mm -hmm. but Nebraska still has a better coaching staff you're at home you got better talent you got to mm -hmm. go to six and a half wins right there Minnesota here's your trap game right Mm -hmm. Here's your absolute uh, trap game uh, because Minnesota's offense, the OC and the support staff, really good. Uh, the staff rankings are very close here. This is another 50-50 game. If you're betting over, you're also betting Nebraska to win this football game. So, you know, add a half, half a win. Now we're at six. What, what are we at? One to five, we're six. Seven, now we're at seven, right? Two, we're at yeah. seven, mm -hmm. right? So um, you're at Michigan. Now this is a great time to play Michigan too. Look, they mm -hmm. lost their, they lost their offensive coordinator, they lost their defensive coordinator, they got a bad special teams coach. That's a good time to I mean, you know, something they're still going to be underdogs in that football game. Mm -hmm. But it's not nearly the team that it was last year. So Rob transitive math, stop going Michigan kill the flag <laughs> they're going to kill the <laughs> No transitive math. Um Wisconsin, Wisconsin and Iowa are two of the best coach teams in college football, period. Yeah. yeah. Whether, whether you like it or not, uh, they are, their numbers are good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, you're looking for one win out of these last three. That's what you're looking for, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're looking, you know, better than, better than a half a win. So, I mean, that's, again, that puts us right there between seven and eight. So, mm -hmm. Uh, that that's the simp no power rankings at all. Just looking at coaching, looking at mm -hmm. where the game is played, looking at the talent. You can, I mean, we just walked through it. You can see where the make and break games are, but that those first six games, those are all outside of Oklahoma, in my opinion. You just got to win those football games. Got to figure out yeah. a way to get that done. Dave. So, I mean, it's fun to see Nebraska break that down, and, and it's great for our listeners. I'm wondering from our BetCast listeners, if there's – I imagine you've done that for every single team in FBS. Is there any teams out there that you think um, there's a value with their season win total? Me, 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 yeah, Dave. Or right. this one, yeah. Can I tell you a cool story? <laughs> I, <laughs> Why love, not? I love betting on our clients. Uh-huh. <laughs> But I'm not going to tell you who they are. <laughs> so, there's this there's this one team out there though. Um, they have the second best staff rating in their conference. Their win total projection you can bet on is three. 
Mm. They have the mm-hmm. second best. Now, now, obviously, none of these are locks. Is that Kansas? Football. No. It's not like Leopold, but keep going. It's, it's not going to tell you. Is it FBS, FBS <laughs> or true. Power 5? That's it's, true. It's, uh, it's G5. It's G5. Okay. Okay. So, oh, anybody, anybody betting... Oh, I'll give you another one. Just a second. Let me finish this one. All right. So, anybody betting, consider taking FIU over three wins. They got the best offensive coordinator in that conference. They have the second best staff in that conference. Their schedule is a cakewalk. Plus, they were one and eleven last year. Teams got to bounce back from that, right? Mm-hmm. They're, 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 they had the third worst turnover margin in college football last year. That always bounces, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they had bad luck. They had bad everything. So now that's I'm not saying that's a lock, but I really like that one in terms of kind of a dark horse one nobody talks about. I think I think that is really good value. Another game though, betting wise, because we all love to to talk about betting these games. Um, I, I don't know what the line is right now. When it opened, it was Penn State minus one at Auburn. <laughs> Penn State last year was a top twenty in scoring efficiency, total team scoring efficiency. Auburn has the second worst staff in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Okay, they are yeah. bad. They want to fire that they staff. Were, they would have right. They, they are really bad. They have a bad OC. They got a bad DC. Nothing is good there right now. Um, Penn State recruits better. Penn State has a better head coach, a better OC, a better DC. Everything, and and you're hell. Just go money line. Just take the points out of it. It's mm-hmm. what's one point. So mm-hmm. that one of the one of those early early games. That is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, leaning Penn State to win that game straight up. Hey, let's right, take a break here stuff. for a second. Rob, do we have any questions or anything that's come in that that you uh, from Redcasters watching I that mean, we want to? We have we have quite a few actually. I mean, they started lighting up the board pretty much right as um, <laughs> we did this. Um, I mean, there are stuff like you know, pick your favorite Nebraska. Nebraska. Let's see here. Here we go. Jim in Minnesota, you know, a show favorite. Um, from a matrix standpoint, was Nebraska close last year or were there precursors that say they are further away than we think? Good question. Well, I mean, like 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 we we laid out earlier, their their defensive scoring efficiency efficiency was was top 20. Their offensive scoring efficiency efficiency was in the, in the top 65, so it wasn't a train wreck. The only thing that was missing was you had a a crater of a special teams unit. Yep. I mean, and, and, you know, one of the things that Dave and I always talk about with, with these coaching staffs is you have to weaponize that part of, of the game. You can't, you can't give that to a, an analyst that has never, you know, done anything before or, 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 or give it to, to, to a guy who's focusing on two other position groups. You know, you can't, you can't put it in, in, in the background on the back burner, expect it to be any good because, Coaches around the country, staffs around the, around the country are starting to catch on. They're starting to actually put a coach responsible for that whose job is to break that down and, to, and weaponize it. So mm-hmm. if you're not doing it, you're going to miss out on all that hidden yardage. You're going to miss out on, on on chances to break games wide open. Um, you know, block punts, block kicks, that's as good as a turnover. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's sometimes it's better than a turnover, turnover because of the field position you gain and also the momentum gain you, you, you gain in, in, in those situations. So I, I would say they were they were as close as everybody had had had, had seen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Three well, games, three, three, three. No, three things. Three things about special teams. OK, that, that I want uh, that I'm going to I'm going to talk about here real quick for the listeners. Two of them are Nebraska. One of them is is a projection. Okay. Uh, Nebraska with Bill Bush rock solid. Okay. Solid. Well, well above average, you're talking three and a half uh, star special teams coach. So we're, we like that. Nebraska fan. We like that. We like seeing a guy in place that, that, that is, that is doing that. Number one, number two, quietly, nobody's talking about this. I want to bring this up because this is really important and absolutely by design. Nobody noticed, or did somebody notice? that Nebraska went out and through the portal brought in two of the best kickers out of FCS. Mm -hmm. The second most important thing behind a returning starting quarterback is returning punter and kicker. Mm -hmm. 
It's worth a it's worth a football game. A veteran mm-hmm. punter and kicker combination returning is worth a football game. So is a returning quarterback. Okay, so special teams wise, I expect Nebraska to. I know last year was brutal. I expect them to win a game off of special teams. Mm-hmm. Okay, not only because of of Bill, but because of having the experience there. The third thing is this is going to be one of probably the top two teams in the country. It has one of the best coaching staff. It is top three recruiter. Their weakest link is their special teams quote coach, Parker Fleming at Ohio State. If Ohio State trips up. I'm calling it right now on this show. If they trip up, watch it be on special teams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you mentioned the last two t- uh, teams on our schedule, Wisconsin and Iowa, and you said that those are top coaching staffs. They both have full-time special teams coordinators. Mm-hmm. And that is the route, I guess, the transition we have gone. On the Redcast, we have Boomer. He is our special teams coordinator on the show. So the Redcast <laughs> dedicates a guy to special teams. But two years ago, to your point, Adam, uh, we dedicated special teams to an analyst. Last year, it, it went up to a position coach. And then now this year, we have a dedicated guy, Bill Bush, doing it. Um, we always, like I mentioned earlier, Dave Dave likes the you know yards per, per point stat. You know, there are these, these certain stats that are very indicative of winning football. And there was a, a book that I read with, um, or it was, I heard uh, Urban Meyer talking about it. And he read a book where he said that nine out of 10 times, if you block a punt in a game, you're going to win it. And he Mm -hmm. goes, at that point, he knew instantly that's why he wanted to – and this was early in his career. He wanted to take special teams so seriously. He's like, there aren't very many indicative stats like that where nine out of ten times anything happens. But he says, if you block a punt, you're going to win the game nine out of ten times. Now, Dave is shaking his head, and I don't know if that's – he just doesn't like Urban Meyer. Talk about pulling stuff out of your ass. Something like that. Uh, Now now (laughs) I'm going to look it up. Well, that's yeah, a, look it up. It's it's a Bruce Reed's dad wrote the book. I guess I think two, he was like Montana, or Montana State coach. So you can two read problems. It One, you're listening to Urban Meyer. Okay? <laughs> hey, I'm so not going have, to a bar with him. I'm just listening to him. The guy's won a couple issues, games. You, you have issues that you are going to need to resolve on your own. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. Before I get to my other point, that reminds me of a bit of a story, though, about the story within a story. Okay. okay. Uh, this this is uh, everybody's always talking about explosive plays, right? Boom! Win the explosive plays, win the game. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it, if you win the explosive plays, you win like seventy one percent of the games. But that's not the whole story. See, now if you take all the explosive plays and cut it into non scoring and scoring plays. If you win the non-scoring explosive plays, you only win 57% of the time. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. us. Yep, that's us. If you win the explosive scoring plays, you win 82% of the football games. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, points are important. Ben, (laughs) it's not so important in the NFL. Okay, Ben, don't break. Because professionals, if you give it to them, they'll take advantage of it. In college, it's 18 to 22-year-olds. They're not as patient. So I don't really care having my team give up big plays that don't score, right? I mean, you know, is it great? No, it still still sucks, right? It's still Mm -hmm. 57%. But I would rather have the explosive scoring than the explosive non-scoring plays. And that's where we got it, you know, like if he says 9 out of 10 or block block punch, you win the football game. What are all the other circumstances? So, Mm -hmm. you know. Score on um, those. Field position sure. game, well, all that type of that, that's you, you just brought up Nebraska football the last few years in a nutshell there. I mean, we would uh-huh. have explosive plays at times, but we've had red zone trouble scoring. I've uh-huh. brought up a number of times on this show. I don't care what the hell stat this falls under. We had a hundred plus yard drive against Wisconsin and didn't score. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the hell that means, but if you put up over a hundred yards on a, on a I'll, possession I'll with, you, with penalties and everything, and you don't score, then it's just, it's a lot of yards with no points. And Dave, you know, yards per point. <laughs> that, that doesn't no, give not anything. good numbers. No, it's not good numbers. No, it's it's stop talking about yards. Mm-hmm. Seriously, seriously, anything related to yards is worthless. It is not a yards board. Mm-hmm. It's a score. Yeah, you want to get less yards, more points. Yeah, it, it 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 doesn't. It, it the, the yardage doesn't matter. The mm-hmm. most important thing is efficiency. Mm-hmm. How well, how how many plays does it take you to score the football? That's yeah, it. But that's what yards per point is too. That is all about yeah. efficiency. Is yards per point, not mm-hmm. yards per play, yeah. not yard yards per point. Because yeah, that takes into how account many yards all your does it take you to score. 
your pick right. sixes, all that type of stuff. Yeah, your right? offense could never be on the field. Scoring team. You can win the game if you can, if you have seven pick sixes and your offense is never on the field and you're still going to have a very good yards per point <laughs> because of that. You know, so that that does matter, that yards, but only in that sense, yards per point matter not yards per play not some of the you know yards per game too i mean we've won yeah. or we've had so many games where we've out yarded teams by 100 plus yards or we've out yarded teams by 300 yards and won by four and it's like oh my god 